Hi everyone, this lesson is on styes, which are also called hordeolum. So we're going to talk about eye styes in this lesson, what causes them, different types of styes. We'll also talk about the signs and symptoms, how they're diagnosed, and how they're treated. So a sty or a hordeolum is an acute bacterial infection of the eyelid. So this is what a sty can look like. There are actually two types. There is an external hordeolum and an internal hordeolum. We'll talk about the differences later on when we talk about the pathophysiology, but this is what is an external hordeolum, and we'll look at pictures of what an internal hordeolum looks like later. Now, eye styes are a relatively common condition. Now, there isn't a lot of epidemiological data looking at the differences in prevalence between different types of patients, but it is known that there is a higher prevalence in adults versus children. And it's also known that there's an increased risk if you have other conditions. And these include diabetes, dermatological conditions like seborrheic dermatitis or rosacea. And rosacea is what is shown in this image. And other eyelid conditions like blepharitis. Blepharitis is an inflammation of the eyelid. So if you have any of these conditions, you're more likely to get an eye sty or a hordeolum. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of getting a sty. So a sty is going to occur at an eyelash follicle or at the margin of the eyelid. And what's going to happen is that there's going to be a stasis of glandular secretion. So you have all these little glands on the margin of the eyelid. And what's going to happen is those glands will become clogged or blocked for some reason. And the different types of glands that can be affected include zeiss glands, mole glands, and meibomian glands. So each of these glands actually secretes different types of products. So zeiss glands can secrete sebum and other antiseptic products that can help reduce or fight against bacteria. Mole glands have similar immune functions. And meibomian glands are going to be modified sebaceous glands that help to lubricate the eye. So if there is stasis or some blockage or clogging of any of these glands, what can happen is there can be a secondary bacterial infection. So if there's a blocked gland, bacteria can get into that gland and cause an infection. This is how we can get a sty. And the most common bacteria that's going to cause infection in a hordeolum is Staphylococcus aureus. So again, one of these types of glands is going to become blocked or clogged. So it's not going to be able to secrete its glandular products as it's supposed to, and then it's going to lead to a secondary bacterial infection with Staphylococcus aureus. And this is going to then lead to what we call a sty. And what's going to happen is when those bacteria get into that clogged gland, there's going to be an immune response. So we're going to have polymorphonuclear leukocytes coming in to the area, and they are going to help fight the bacteria, but also cause pus and some swelling. And then we can also get necrotic debris as well. So all of this can cause a purulent pocket or a little small abscess to form on the eyelid. So it's going to have this little bump on the eyelid. And depending on the type of gland that is affected, we're either going to get an external hordeolum or an internal hordeolum. These are again the two types of hordeolum. And the external hordeolum is the one we're actually going to see. It's that little pus-filled raised lump on the eyelid. And the types of glands that are affected in the external hordeolum are going to be the zeiss glands or the mole glands. And again, it's going to cause this external raised pus-filled bump on the outside of the eyelid. Now, with regards to the internal hordeolum, this is where we're going to have issues with meibomian glands. Way to remember this, this is how I remember it, is that meibomian, meibomian, in for internal. So meibomian glands, internal. And this is what an internal hordeolum looks like. So you actually have to lift the eyelid to see it. So you see this big bump inside the eyelid. So you don't really actually see this bump on the outside. There may be some swelling or some redness on the outside, but you don't see this bump. So let's talk about the clinical features of a hordeolum or a sty. So again, we mentioned before, it's going to be painful. It's going to be inflamed. So the eyelid's going to be inflamed. So we can see inflammation of the eyelid here and here. There's going to be a red swollen lump, as we talked about before. And there's going to be a pustule. So pustule, again, this is a pustule. You can see the white in it. So that's a little small focal abscess. And then in the case of an internal hordeolum, you'll actually see this big red swollen lump or bump on the inner eyelid. And what patients will often note is that it will have an insidious onset, meaning that it'll just slowly occur. And there was no other obvious reason for having a lump on the eye. There was no other injury or any other problem that may have occurred. It just simply slowly developed and then we get this lump and some swelling of the eyelid. Another important points to make note of with regards to the clinical features of a hordeolum or a sty is that there's no pain with eye movement. So if you were to get the patient to look around, move their eyes, there's no pain. There's no ocular pain in general. 
So the eye or the eyeball is not painful, but some patients may have a decreased visual acuity. So if the sty is so large or if it's an internal sty, it can rub against the eye and cause some blurry vision. So those are some things that are important to make note of as well. Now, how do clinicians diagnose and treat this condition? So this is going to be clinical diagnosis. Simply seeing the sty is going to be enough to make the diagnosis. So we can look at some history and physical examination, but that'll be how it's diagnosed. And if there is pain with ocular movement, so if you actually get the patient to move their eyes around and they do experience pain, which is something that shouldn't happen with a sty, if they do experience pain, this is indicative of orbital cellulitis, and this is another more serious optical condition. So once the clinician has made the diagnosis, how do they treat it? So this is often a self-limiting condition, so treatment is not necessary. It's often going to resolve on its own. It usually takes one to two weeks, and there can often be spontaneous drainage of the sty. So the sty can simply break over time, and that pus and that other bacterial debris can be drained from the eye on its own. What can help with treatment is having a warm cloth with gentle compress, so using warm cloth with clean water and a little small gentle compression onto the sty can help with removing some of that debris that was clogging the gland and helping that sty to perhaps resolve and drain on its own. And a little gentle massaging of the area can also do the same thing. So it can help mechanically move or try to free up or unblock those clogged glands. And using baby shampoo or a little mild soap can also help as well. This can help to remove some of the bacterial debris. And in some cases, if it's a very large sty or if it's not resolving on its own over a certain amount of time, topical antibiotics with erythromycin may be used. And if the sty is quite large and it's bothersome, topical steroids can be used to help reduce the swelling of the sty. And then in some more rare and more severe cases, incision and drainage by an ophthalmologist may be employed. So this is where an ophthalmologist will come in, put an incision in, and will drain the sty. This is going to be in cases where there's been trials of these treatments before that haven't worked, and the sty is quite large and problematic. So please check out my lessons on cataracts and blepharitis and other ophthalmological conditions. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.